Let's say you fancy a Golf, but it's not going to be quite big enough for your family. Well, Volkswagen has the answer in the form of the Golf Sports Van, or Golf SV for short. It's based on the Golf chassis only. It's about that much longer than the Golf, and so there we go, you've got a lot more knee room. It's about that much taller than the Golf, so headroom, that's very good as well. And yes, you guess it. It's that much wider than the Golf chassis. And so it's easier to fit three adults abreast back here. Now I should point out the fact that you do have this central tunnel which gets in the way of your feet. And on some similar size MPVs, you get a flat floor. But if you notice down here, there's these cutaways. So there is somewhere to put your feet and kids will be fine with that. Also, kids will like these pop-up picnic tables you get there. And the fact that you can actually recline the seats if you want to sit more upright to get a better view out. I should point this out actually, I'll, I'll show you over here. When you recline the seat, uh, there we go, you don't snag on the seat belt because it's got its own little separate section just there with a little runner that keeps it from getting snagged on the seat as you fold it back. Speaking of being able to move the seats, you can actually slide them forwards as well. And if I put this all the way forward, yeah, knee room is a little bit tight for me, but a child would be fine. But it would mean that the boot is now absolutely massive, as you'll see now. Actually, before I show you the boot, I should point out the fact that if you do have this chest slid all the way forward, it does make getting out of the back a little bit more difficult. The boot is huge with the rear seat slid all the way forward, and even if you slide them all the way back, it's still more than 25% bigger than the normal Golf's boot. And it's pretty impressive compared to other five-seater MPVs as well. The load lip is low, which helps when loading, though you can lower the floor if you need to carry taller items. The Golf SV is also festooned with a raft of cubby spaces. It seems that every available spare bit of space has been put to good use. Even the door bins have been widened over those in the normal Golf. Here in the front you get the same infotainment system you get with a normal Golf. So you've got that proximity sensor for the touch screen. There you go, as so you move your finger towards the items pop up and it comes with stuff like DAB digital radio. You've also got USB connectivity and as standard all models get air conditioning and Bluetooth for your mobile phone. There's lots of adjustment in the seat position as well, which is really handy, especially when it comes to raising the driver's seat. So I had it quite low just, but because the car is quite tall I can jack it really high up for a great view out and over other traffic there's also lots of adjustment in the steering wheel as well so it is very easy to find your ideal driving position the Golf SV is available with a wide choice of turbo petrol and turbo diesel engines however it's the diesels with their low down pulling power and impressive economy which suit the MPV best the 1.6 litre Blue Motion diesel model can return 74 miles per gallon and it emits under 100 grams per kilometre of carbon dioxide, and so that means it's free from road tax. However, I don't reckon you should get that if you're going to regularly be driving this car fully loaded. You want the more punchy 2 litre diesel because it does feel noticeably swifter, especially on the motorway for overtaking. And it'll still do 60 miles per gallon, and if you want an automatic, then that's no problem either. The DSG dual clutch auto is great when you've got it in auto mode, and it lets you change gears yourself if you want to using these steering wheel mounted paddles. Obviously, being based on the Golf chassis is a great starting point for this car because it does handle very well for an MPV. There's not that much lean to the corners, even though it is a tall vehicle and the steering is very precise. That said, if you want it to feel a bit more sporty, you could go for the GT model and that has slightly stiffer suspension, although I should warn you that it does make the ride a little bit more bumpy. If you do want the GT model because of its extra kit, but you want a compliant ride, then you should probably go for the adaptive dampers because for 800 quid, they come with a comfort mode and it does make the car glide a bit better over bumps. On the motorway at speed, this thing's generally pretty quiet. There's hardly any wind noise at all. You've got great insulation. The only thing I will say is that you do get a little bit of tire roll when you're on a rough surface such as this one here. It's just a little bit noisy when you're getting up around 70 miles an hour. Another thing that's a bit strange for an MPV is the fact that the wing mirrors are actually quite small. They're just like that on a normal car. And you kind of expect them to be big for this type of vehicle. Then there's the fact that if you want to use your Golf SV as a van, it's not as good as a Ford C-Max as you can't remove the rear seats. 
In fact, this five-seater MPV can't quite match the total load-looking capacity of many of its rivals. What's more, it's rather bland to look at compared to the more cavernous yet infinitely more stylish C4 Picasso. And while the Golf SV's interior is well made, it just lacks the panache of the Citroen. It's also slightly more expensive to buy than that car too, but then the Golf SV does have that more desirable VW badge. And when you come to sell it on, you should be able to get a bit more money for it. But if you want a five-seater MPV with rear seats that you can remove, then you want to check out our review of the Ford C-Max by clicking up there. If you want to see the five-seater MPV with the most style, then you want to check out our review of the Citroen C4 Picasso by clicking down there. If you click down there, you can watch our very latest video review. If you click up there on our logo, you can subscribe to the Car Buyer YouTube channel.